This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. Poly Theater Internship actually produce and shoot and direct this event. So it's their own event, so it's really cool. And you'll see them in the white shirts and black pants. I'll give them a shout out later. Uh, I do have some advice though, never do as a joke. Ask them to write a poem saying 10 things they hate about Matt. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, script to Screen examines how the uh, screenplay is translating to the movie. The series was actually born on the stage a year and a half ago with our guests when they came for Legally Blonde. Uh, they are the most successful. <laughs> they are the most successful uh, women screenwriting duo in Hollywood history, writing such films as Ten Things I Hate About You, Ellen Enchanted, uh, She's the Man, The House Bunny, The Ugly Truth. Please give a Ten Things I Love About Them shout out to Kirsten Smith and Karen McCullough Lutz. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty flattered about that whole most famous history. history. I don't history. Know about that. You are yeah, the, the most it. successful. You, your films have grossed about five hundred and thirty million dollars, and as a, the writing cool. females, and uh, you know, and we talked about last time, uh, only eighteen percent of films are written by women in Hollywood yeah. today. So it's amazing that you've got you guys had such a wonderful run, uh, and we we know it's going to continue. Thanks. But let's talk about uh, how was it seeing uh, Ten Things I Hate About You with the Pollock. Oh, it was great. It looked so great and uh, brought back a lot of happy memories. Yeah. You know? it's, it was a great time making that movie. and Obviously, it was, it was the first script that we ever sold, and it was the first movie that we ever got made. And it, for all, all the cast, it was their first you know, major role in a, in a movie. So it was in the director's first movie. And so it was a, kind of a special time for everybody, for sure. Uh, how many bows, uh, how many expos this movie's based on, and how many think they're Heath Ledger of yours? Oh, <laughs> how many ex boyfriends think this movie's based on them, and how many are oh. think they're Heath Ledger? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, the title is based on a, a diary entry I made in high school. I had a boyfriend named Anthony who I was frequently unhappy with. And uh, <laughs> I made a list called Things I Hate About Anthony. <laughs> and I, when Kirsten and I decided to write this, I went through all my high school diaries to like kind of bone up on those angsty memories. And when I told her about that list, she's like, that's our title, 10 Things I Hate About You. So. It actually, like it came out of a conversation that we had like a, a was like it a almost year a year before, before we were even yeah. writing the script? I think weird. she was telling me, and I was like, 10 things I hate about you. Great title. Yeah, that's how it started. Yeah, so but if Anthony's very proud of that fact. We're still friends today. Yeah. And every now and then I'll get like a <laughs> random phone call in the middle of the night like, my nephew doesn't believe that this title is about me. Tell him. And I'm like, on the phone, I'm like, yes, I hated Anthony in high school. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to take credit. Uh, so what's what's the uh, what was the connection combining the high school genre with Taming of the Shrew? Hmm. Well, we thought that it was pretty brilliant and clueless how she took a an old classic and put it in high school. So we kind of just copied that idea. Yeah, I think <laughs> Romeo and Juliet was Romeo and Juliet that being came out made. Yeah, or? I think it was being made around the same time. Yeah, but we we definitely thought that there was some kind of the adapt a classic to the teen movie format was a good tactic, especially because we were new screenwriters and it seemed like a good thing to just take an existing story that we knew was brilliant that we wouldn't have to pay anyone for because they were like long dead <laughs> and then we could, yeah. So it's in public domain, so they're not, you know, Shakespeare, Will is not going to be suing you. The, no, he's not yet. 
well, how is it hard? Was it hard, like, doing the Shakespeare structure, injecting your own kind of personalities into it, or did you kind of worry about that? it was hugely helpful, actually. We learned a lot. I mean, watching the movie, I feel like it's one of our best structured films, and then I go to pat myself on the back and realize it's because it's not our structure. Because <laughs> we stole from only the greatest writer ever to live. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what characters are based on you, you two, you're wondering what you most identify with? I, of course, identify with Heath Ledger. Yes. No, the AV nerd, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, who do you identify by? Bianca, Kat, do you guys have any? Well, I mean, I definitely would complain to my English teacher a lot about the books we had to read. That's definitely one thing yeah. I did. I think you were the same way, too, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the feminist streak of Kat, like, she's kind of a combination of Karen's, like, Willful l- attitude and and then like my indie, indie rock, rock and feminism yeah. thing. So yeah. I was always like, "Why are we reading Moby Dick? It's really boring." Like it was that girl. <laughs> I was more like, and, like it's racist." Fan. Yeah, yeah very fan. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "This is a Hardy Boys with racism. We don't need to be reading this." Yeah. So. Yeah, I got yelled at during English class when I said the reason why Herman Melville wor- wrote so long is because he got paid by the word. <laughs> and the English people weren't too happy when I made that up. Yeah. Um, so did you think of any character when you were writing the script? Did you think of any people he had in mind for the characters? Just in your head, it's like there I were no teen stars when we made this. I mean, it was very like because you know we were from like the whole John Hughes era where it's like there was established teen stars, but they like became teen stars in this. So we yeah. didn't have anybody in mind. I mean, it's funny. A lot of people auditioned for the movie that were. Now household. I mean, I think Kate Hudson auditioned and mm-hmm. Katie Holmes and Josh Hartnett yeah. almost got the heat ledger part. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, there was I, there was a lot of noteworthy people that were after it, but it's so. It, I feel like it's so um, different now that you couldn't really just make a teen movie with all unknown people. There would sort of be the Selena Gomezification of it, or is that a <laughs> I think that's true. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it seems like Hollywood's willing, unwilling to take a risk right now on unknown yeah. stars, you know. So, yeah. it's, uh, so let, let's talk about Julia Stiles. Did you work with her when she was cast, or work with her on the character, mm-hmm. or? Yeah, I mean, we wrote. We were just on set for a short time, but we worked on the scene with her in her trailer. I mean, it was really exciting for me. I thought it was exciting to get to work with her. We'd never like rewritten a scene with an actor. With the actress there. And it was the scene, and Karen was like, when we're watching it tonight, she's like, it's the scene where she flashes. It's Um, always been so painful to me. Tonight it wasn't quite as bad as I recall. Here it comes, here it comes. (laughs) No, I just hated hated the way the scene was directed because it's like, it was like that capery music and it's like, they keep looking and like Heath is like, I don't know, scampering around like a mouse in the back. I'm like, climb at the (laughs) You window already, like. <laughs> <laughs> but then you crazy. watched it tonight. Then I watched like, it tonight. You're like, like, what was I right. complaining about? Yeah. See, she's very like, willful. It's, not as bad this is a, as I remember. it's a Cat Stratford attitude. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because yeah, we were we were, uh, you know, our relationship with the director on the movie was kind of rocky a little bit. So we had a lot of a lot of things we were just you know, doggedly determined would have. Or we're going to ruin the movie, you know, the way that he shot it and things that he did. And he added a lot of the physical comedy in the film. And, you know, we watch it now and are like, oh, the motorcycle jump is great and the arrow in the butt is great and the you know, the golf balls are great. Yeah, I mean, he really brought a lot of that to it because he was a sitcom director. And we were I still think the motorcycle scene is random. I mean, it's, it's funny, it's but rea- it's I random. Like, uh, yeah, it is, a l- <laughs> it's, it is random. You're waiting for something plot point at the bottom. Unmotivated, but... Um, <laughs> But to, I mean, I don't know. Li- people like the motorcycle scene, right? What Raise do you guys hands. think? Raise your hand. I'm not getting a I'm not getting, well, We're not getting at your favorite scene in the movie, uh, the audience. Uh, it was oh, a little yeah. random. That's what I was kind of. So that was a director thing. Well, he yeah. saw that hill and he's like, "Oh, we got to use this hill and have someone drive a bike down it." <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps a little setup would have worked a little. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So were you guys surprised by her awesome dancing? Hmm? Julia Stiles' awesome, oh awesome God. dancing? Yeah, she was great. <laughs> Good. I know. I, I don't think she, I mean. They brought in a choreographer to teach her that, I remember. But she had the natural moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like, oh, my God, what if she's a terrible dancer? That scene's going to be yeah. so <laughs> 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 Luckily, she was good. <laughs> um, okay, I was watching the audience. There were some tears in the audience during the poem scene. 
Really? Uh, yeah, I was watching it. So Wait, guys, how could you watch the audience? I was staring at the audience. I was like oh. over there, and I was you, watching the you audience. You were being filmed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think? What about that scene? Because everybody's moved by that scene. Oh, what is it? Cool. What is it? Yeah, when we wrote it, we didn't intend for her to cry, but when she did, and we, the first time we saw it, we're like, holy shit, that makes it so much better. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, she's so tough as a character. Yeah. 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 And she never showed that kind of like you know uh, vulnerability. It was yeah. actually one of, one of my favorite things. All right, so for well, plus the li- when they cut to Heath, that look on his face mm-hmm. is so gorgeous and heartbreaking. Yeah, that's, that's what gets me. <laughs> Which no, is I mean it's really built. I was thinking about that tonight. It's like built on his reaction. It's such mm-hmm. a powerful part of the scene too. Yeah. Uh, which, it, which ironically enough brings us to Heath. Uh, wh- what was the process of d- developing him? Because he was very nonchalant, dark, mysterious, but cool, charming, and understanding. It's very deep for a high school student. <laughs> Uh, in a movie. Mm. So what yeah. was the process? Did you work on the character? How did you want to frame him? Because well, we, we like the whole mystique of him. The scene where they're talking about the rumors, it kind of goes really fast, so you can't really hear a lot of them. But we just had all these different crazy backstories of where everyone had thought he'd been for the past year, and we wanted to make him like this mythic character. And, um, but yeah, it's just, it was, then when he got cast, he looked so much older than the other kids, even though he was 19 when we shot it. He just turned 19. But we were, when we first saw the dailies, we're like, are people going to ask why the 25-year-old Australian man is in high school? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he looks a lot older. But it works. No one ever asked us that question. So. <laughs> uh, my favorite line, actually, the movie was, never let anyone make you think you don't deserve what you want. People have yeah. used that as like their yearbook quotes and stuff. I've seen. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. People, I always get weird emails about that. Well, he's like, because you know, it's nor- true. You shouldn't let anyone yeah. make you feel like you don't deserve it. It's good. But it also endeared you to him a little. I stand by that advice. Yeah. I thought you totally endeared to his character at that moment because normally he'd be the bully and you know he learns mm-hmm. to not be the bully, but he's actually a nice guy. Yeah. Which I thought was kind. Of, so is that something you guys play with? Like he was you just misunderstood. But you don't. You like to avoid stereotypes. I've noticed. Like you don't want a stereotypical character. You seem to want to play with that a little. I know it's in your writing. Is that something you think about? Or well, Joey uh, was kind of the yeah. He was stereo- <laughs> but instead of being like the jock, we made him like the model because that was funnier. To, uh, a little twist on uh, it. Yeah. Um, I, I did. I watched the Blu-ray last night. The Blu-ray behind the scenes. I saw a picture with you guys with Heath Ledger. So yeah. uh, how was it? Did you see the unborn Joker? Did you see the star when you met him? Or did you see the talent even coming the movie? It was pretty obvious yeah. that he was a movie He's star and charismatic uh, for sure. Yeah, we met him before re- before the movie, before he was even cast in the movie, and so it was like this great thing of getting to meet someone, and then they end up being in your movie, and uh, it was pretty. His star quality was like wildly evident, and he did seem like Karen said like way older than his years. Yeah, like it, he was packing soul. a lot of life into. A short amount of time so um yeah he seemed in fact we went to a bar with him when he was 18 and he would, didn't no even one ever it. carded him like it's crazy <laughs> he would go up and order and bring the beers back to us and we're like we're, we're like 30 and like, he's 18. this is weird like yeah he's, he just had a presence about him that was very like i am a man yeah. <laughs> good presence to have and it worked great for you know because you need someone strong with cat it, yeah. And the casting would have been, I think, a disaster if you didn't have that. Who can compete with Julia yeah. Yeah. or Kat in that scene? So, yeah. Um, I have Bianca. I really like too. I mean, I Bianca know. was a fascinating. You know, again, because you, you think conceited, you know, but uh, nice heart. I mean, you know, yeah. and she was kind of. Is that something you had fun with her arc? Because that's another character with an arc which I find amazing in your writing. Thank Every you. character has their own arc and story. Like you don't just ignore the. You we know. Try. Well, I don't know if Joey really had an arc. No, no, Joey. He yeah. kind of stayed dicky all the way around. But, but Dad did. You know, the dad, dad is muffin. beautiful. Yeah, I love this, the dad Who? scene. The dad. Larry Miller. Oh, yeah, the dad. Is and genius. he added a ton of that comedy. Um, he's a stand-up himself really and good. a comedy writer, so he added a lot of, like, the jiggy with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the jiggy with it. Yeah. The awkward middle-aged dad thing. Yeah. You know, and the are. English teacher. I, th- I know, Daryl yeah, Mitchell. Yeah, he's so good. He's in a wheelchair dad. now. <laughs> he actually got in a horrible <laughs> motorcycle accident. He's in a wheelchair, but he still acts. So it was very awesome. funny. In the original script, it was it, I read an early draft. It was a woman teacher. Was that a switch or? No, I think that was always a guy. Was it? Wasn't it? I think in the script we gave out the scene we gave out for the poem. It was actually a woman teacher. Oh, was it? Maybe. I mean, because I think Gil, the director, had worked with that actor on a sitcom, so he was. I mean, he did a really good job of casting all the adult mm-hmm. characters. Yeah, Alison Janney was good. Yeah. 
So, oh, Allison did it. I mean, I, I saw the behind the scenes. She was like laughing at how much fun she had. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun filming the movie. Uh, all right, so Joseph Gordon-Levitt, another soon-to-be star that he you guys like cast. He such a baby. Didn't he was so such a, weird. Did anybody notice that? He looked like he was 12 years old. He was 18. <laughs> that's why. <funny. laughs> <laughs> he looks so, like, so young because now we see him as Robin now and stuff like that. Uh, did, um, so did you get a chance to meet with him or did you? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we did. And he was, he was the first person cast. officially cast. He was the a, biggest star at the time because he was on Third Rock from the Sun. And we, we had to have a meeting with him where he v- articulated his concerns about the script and we had to assuage his fears um, with the, and the producer was there and it was kind of like our job to make him feel comfortable about taking the part. So it worked, whatever we said. I think I said... I don't even re- remember what his fears were, but at one time, you said something like, it's like Han Solo. Or, or you're, you're like Luke Skywalker yeah, of a movie. Oh, oh I don't know what I, <laughs> okay. But it worked. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was there anything in the movie, the original script, that you wish stayed in the movie or hit the cutting room floor? I think, well, I mean, some of, there was some of the Mandela Shakespeare stuff, like that was a bigger part of it. There was a few, there are a few scenes that just, um, that were shot that I guess I wish I could watch, even if, I mean, like we, the Thai restaurant, there was a Thai restaurant scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there was a scene with Bianca and Kat and Miss Perky at the end. We never even saw those scenes cut together, so, um. They're like deep underground be in Burbank or somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. What about the mom? Was that a choice to... Uh, we were told to cut the mom. Well, she... Oh, yeah, the mom. There was a she, mom well, there in was the a mom. original script. Yeah, and then they were like, why is Kat such a bitch? What if her mom left? And that's why she's such a bitch. We're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with the female characters, yeah, it's like you, you... She's gotta have a reason to have an attitude problem because... If you have a vagina and an attitude problem, there needs to be an explanation. Be <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not allowed to say that. would have been I don't have a response. I can't. But yeah, that's that why one. that. Uh. <laughs> but that's why that scene with the pearls was added, which is not my favorite scene. It seems a little bit overwrought. Um, but yeah, Karen's still really giving mad. notes. I know. I'm still giving notes on the movie. That scene, that scene could have been better. <laughs> I kind of like the ghost, though. The mom being the ghost, sort of, because it affected mm-hmm. dad. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. it really set up. I thought it started their relationship. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mind the, the cut of the mom. So the it was. Uh, so I mean, obviously, you enjoy ensemble writing. Is it hard trying to balance the characters, making sure you know they each get their time or service or their story, or does it? Uh, you know, well, this it didn't fun. seem too hard. Yeah, we're writing an ensemble now. I, I'm kind of glad that we watched this while we're writing yeah. our ensemble now. It, it's kind of sad that our 20 something selves can teach us about screenwriting when we should have <laughs> learned the lessons already. But, but um, yeah. I think it's fun to do write ensembles. So, what is your process since you work together? I mean, is it uh, you write together? Do you mm-hmm. take pages or scenes, or is this really just get together and hash it out? Or no, we work in the same room and do it all at the same time. We were writing in the car on the way up here, the whole way. <laughs> and we'll write I got on very the way back. <laughs> we, if there's an automobile, we can write inside of it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but we write at at, mostly yes. at our houses and at restaurants, but mostly our houses. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, so, uh, who wins the battle in ca- uh, story and structure, or character and structure? Do you guys like it? Um, we don't battle over it too much anymore. But no. whoever can convince the other one that they're right usually wins. And who, <laughs> if someone is more tired, yeah, uh, say that they will <laughs> sometimes we're just like, all right, we'll try it. If it doesn't work, we'll cut it. That's the easiest way yeah. to do it. And you probably since you've written so well, well to, so long together, it's probably now a rhythm where yes, you know. And if not, both of you are feeling it or something. You know, there's probably something mm-hmm. not working in the scene. And we have like a shorthand for like different moments that we want. We're like, we need the blankety blank moment here or that, and so we know what that means to each other. Whereas right. like Button other the writers would be like, cutter. what the fuck are you talking about? I know. Don't yeah. you try to say things to yeah. the writers with this weird parlor? It's a tre- the scene needs a treacle cutter. I'm sorry. I don't They're know like, what? What's a treacle cutter? Karen knows yeah. what that is. <laughs> Why don't you guys know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we make up our own language. Do you guys outline, or are you an outline bio yes. person? You mentioned the outline. So you want to know your characters very deeply or the structure before you dive in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, I would say probably not more than like a 10-page outline, but, but we need to know the beginning, middle, and end, all the big moments and ter- character turns and emotional scenes and stuff, the key moments, I would say. So in this case, it would have been the, uh, the cat scene? 
Mm -hmm. uh, with that, what are the key moments for? Oh, when she finds out that he got paid, that's like the yeah. thing. The, the prom, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the kissing scenes. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> or the lack of kissing scene. When I, I thought one of the better, mo great mm -hmm. moments of the movie when he turned, you know, when when she was yeah. vomiting on him and she turned him <laughs> away. Uh, so let's go back to your early days. How did you guys meet in the days before the uh, Facebook and the Craigslist and people making friends? And <laughs> <laughs> so I actually opened a tangible envelope and pulled a out a letter. Snail mail. Yeah, snail mail. <laughs> I think I wrote her a letter back saying that I would like to read some of the scripts and then then she mailed me the scripts <laughs> and then <laughs> I read them and then I called her on the phone <laughs> and phone? I said I like free these texting yeah. free email <laughs> yeah I like these and then we agreed to convene in person yeah <laughs> like many months we later. had a meeting in yeah. a bar and then we met in and person. we wrote on cocktail napkins because we didn't we, have with any, our pens. any paper pens <laughs> does anybody write on pens anymore any, any of you aspiring writers we always write yeah. hard copy. I know. On legal pads. And then we wrote, we lived in different, in different states when we began writing, so we would mail pages back and forth. We wrote this script when we lived in different places. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But we did the outline in Puerto Vallarta on the beach. <laughs> They're like, so what? Why are we in Puerto Vallarta? She lived here, yeah. and then we met in Mexico. And Two words, timeshare. Yeah, timeshare. <laughs> timeshare that I bought when I was really drunk. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked out. It came in handy. Yeah, came in handy. So, Karen, how many scripts had you written before? You know, you hooked up with Kirsten, or uh, probably like nine or ten ish around there. And Kirsten, what about you? Or did you? Uh, I think I've written one. She had written college. a bunch of poetry before. Yeah, then. I was a poet, and that, um, but I had read a lot of scripts, so I was like a development. You know, I was in the screenplay development world, so I'd read scripts and done a ton of coverage, so I think I was learning a lot about structure doing that, so. And you just went, uh, just by doing it over and over again, Karen, for you, just mm -hmm. writing different stories. Because a lot of times, I mean, one of the, a lot of aspiring screenwriters think, you know, we just write one script and they'll sell it. And, you yeah. Know. yeah, that's <laughs> what your advice is, just put it, finish it, put it down, put it down, and down start the one. next one, put that down, start the next one, yeah, it takes a lot of practice scripts. Uh, obviously, this was your first, so it, of course, it's very special to you. But uh, well, our first one we sold, not so the first yes. one we wrote. Oh, that, that was my, that was another question. So, how yeah. many did you write before we got I think to this we one? We had like three. Or was mm -hmm. this our third one together? This was, was our second script that we wrote together. We wrote. No, we had never again in Shafika. We wrote Shafika after. We did. Yeah, the sh <laughs> this was the script that got us the Shafika <laughs> writing assignment. That's hilarious. Our first writing assignment. We got paid a thousand dollars, and very it w we only had like a mandate of uh, write a love story set in Indonesia and about a guy, a boy and a girl, and there needs to be doves. Yeah. <laughs> flying. That was like a big. Yeah. And then we there. came up with the story. <laughs> it, we should maybe try I to sell that. I know, we, well, I don't think we own it. It was a writing oh, assignment. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you should we get could like stage a, it as a play. That would be fun. <laughs> you should get like your actor friends to do a scene reading. Totally. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. like that for a little bit. would do it. That's right. <laughs> so we are going to touch a little bit about Legally Blonde. Your, it was that your, I assume your next follow, your follow-up script? It was your next one, I think. You sold. Uh, no, we sold a couple produced. in between there we that never got made. We sold a girl surfing movie, and then we sold... Public this displays was of affection. Yeah, um, a romantic comedy, and then we... We then worked on a TV show for a little bit. Yes, so then... But then Lingley Blanc came pretty soon. Yeah, I think it, I think we got that job right in right as 10 Things was coming out in theaters. We got the Lingley Blanc job. And how was the experience for you for Lingley Blanc? And, uh, Very positive. Uh -huh. And uh, Reese was also, <laughs> did you get to work with Reese or did you get to yes, develop yeah. her character? Uh, you know, it was another character, an actress you launched, you know. She Reese already had a career, but that one made her like a big leading lady for sure. Yeah. It showed her star. I mean, I think she was in Pleasantville right before or like Election. a year or two. Election. Election. Movie and Freeway right. we love too. I don't know if you guys have seen Freeway, but if you're Reese Witherspoon fans, you got to check it out. <laughs> and, what, and then we're moving to um, uh, The House Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Stone, her uh, yes. that was she had just done She's super bad, but it was her first kind of bigger role, uh, co lead. So, mm -hmm. um, and could you describe the process of that because that was you worked with Anna. We came up with that as a pitch, and then pitched it with Anna to the studios, 
and wrote like lines for her to do and everything. And she got a little bit tarted up to look like a bunny. See, well, it was based on her uh, her idea of, or her character idea about a Playboy bunny who gets kicked out of the mansion. But and she had the character really in her head for years, but she didn't know exactly what would happen yeah, to that she's character. Yeah, like, where do those girls go? So yes. we came up with where they went. Yes. And then, <laughs> and we had an idea. We wanted to do something in, about a sorority house mother. And then oh, yeah, it we just had, came yeah. to, I think it came to We were thinking of like an like, animal house sorority, do. like the really wild sorority, and the house mother's like Super you know, Charlotte cool. from Sex and the City, very conservative. So then when Anna told us this, her idea for the character, I'm like, ooh, let's, what if we flip that and make a, the nerdy sorority with like the wild party girl house But mother. that was like six months after. Yeah, it took me a while You to woke get up there. in the middle of the night, like, <gasps> I've got like, it. That's it, that's where she goes, <laughs> Veda. <laughs> <But> <laughs> But that's, yeah, that's how uh, I last time, I, I didn't mention a movie that I, it was very popular. She's the man. Yeah, yeah. And I was people like, love it. I know, and it was a funny thing. Channing Tatum. Like, we discovered Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum, Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. exactly. Uh, remember, last time I said you had the pen that lost in a thousand careers, and it's true. Yeah. Like, every star, so many young stars got their start. I, I begged for him to get that role, too. I was really a pain in the butt. Oh, you the weren't producers. the only one, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. Because of his experience. Yeah, every day, the producer the and the casting, uh, I would just email everybody. I'd go, Jenny Tatum, Jenny Tatum, because we could see the audition tapes. They would, there was a website, the link, and everybody else that came in just sucked. And <laughs> he was good and funny and hot. <laughs> and, and they're like, oh, but he looks too street to be in a boarding school. And I'm like, put a tie on him. Make him grow his hair out a little bit. This is not, not hard to figure out, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then when he finally they called him, they're like, Karen, you're going to be very happy. We've cast Channing Tatum. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew he was a star. <laughs> so yeah. you're returning to our familiar uh, Will Shakespeare friend? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, Back to him. Mm -hmm. uh, so, were you brought on? How did that? How did that start the process? Was it a spec script? It or? was a spec mm -hmm. script that um, that was written by a guy who worked for a, the producer Lauren Schuler Donner, and he <gasps> sold it under a pseudonym, I think. Uh, or was that his yeah, real name? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. under a pseudonym. But he they attached Amanda Bynes, who was kind of a, the Selena Gomez of the time, and. Um, Sold it to DreamWorks with her attached, and then once they did, they looked. They brought us in to to come and rewrite it a little bit, and obviously this movie helped pave the way for that. I see. So uh, what's next for you two? What do we we're got? What do we got on the back burner? We're writing an action movie, an action comedy. We're writing the girl version of The Expendable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. We are. We sit around talking about how to kill people all day. It's Quite a departure. It's for very us. therapeutic. Uh, it is. <laughs> I have to come up with little backstories. Like if, like you know, if the Navy SEALs get killed by the bad guys, I have to, in my mind, convince myself that the Navy SEALs did something bad to their wives. So it's okay. If we kill. Them. <laughs> I didn't know that. I did. They're really? so they're all taking alimony from their ex-wives. <laughs> all of them. We should see a scene of that, <laughs> so that other people will feel. So that other people are seeing the same movie that I'm seeing in my yeah, head. Yeah, I maybe. like it. Okay. Just maybe a, like a little. <laughs> <laughs> and we go into them like you know, stealing the wives' money. <laughs> so are we in the later draft, or are we going to be seeing it soon? Pardon? Uh, is it in later draft, or how far along? Oh, no, we're on our second pack. Second, yeah, yeah, second draft. Oh, sweet. No, yeah, it's fast. We're writing quick. We're going to turn it in before Christmas. So. Wow. We got. I mean, you gotta, you gotta make this movie happen, right? The Expendables isn't just gonna sit there forever. You gotta make it now. <laughs> anybody, anybody in mind? We're thinking for uh, the badass Sylvester Stallone part. Well, Sylvester will be playing himself, hopefully. But, but uh, for the Cameron girls, yeah, yeah, yeah our, like our fantasy, Hayek, Cameron Diaz. Yeah, like Melissa McCarthy is Jen a demolitions Garner. expert. <laughs> Anna Ferris is like the the distraction. The sort of wide-eyed distraction. Um, Jen Garner is like the shooter assassin. Jane G as the oh, like yeah, she's like man. the one who can like climb on roofs. Or the slim None Jim. of these people are even aware mm -hmm. of this project. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, but this is completely once again the movie. In their our deals house, are their deal points are negotiated. <laughs> 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 it's uh, any expressions of directing or moving into other areas of. Uh, Kirsten yeah. started directing. I've done a couple short films, so I'd like to do a feature. I don't want to do that. 
you have to get up really early. That's always my excuse, but it's true. It is. I'm not really good at getting up early. I know. So and you're like the latest sleeper in the world, so I don't know why you want to direct. It's going to be night shoots. Exactly. Night shoots? Yeah. <laughs> but if you direct the action movie, it'd be pretty fun. Oh, that's uh, right. That might yeah. be beyond the scope of my ability, but... So, uh, all right, well, why don't we give a chance for our uh, favorite uh, fans in the audience to ask some questions. Uh, oh, wait, if we have to say, let's take a quick poll while we're here about sure. the title of ex the ex Female Expendables. They have given us a working title. Let's hear a pro and con reaction. Let's okay. The Expendables. Pro? They, okay, no. wait, who's pro? There was no who's pro. Who's con? <laughs> Who thinks it's, it's like it's funny terrible. and... Funny, cheesy, funny. It's, it's, it's not no. either. It's not either brand of funny. It's terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's not my title. But I want to call it <laughs> with guns, but uh, <laughs> there, there we go. I think we found our title. Wait, also. what about Killer Racks? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, if you guys have ideas, bring them on. Yeah. I'm leaning towards with guns, but I've got a feeling they're not going to allow it. Probably <laughs> uh, not. Uh, who knows? <laughs> they don't I, all have guns. That's I think what it could be is like one of our titles within like Expendables 3 underneath mm -hmm. it. Expendables is... It's, a, it's, it's an eye roller. I know, it's a groaner. <laughs> I mean, there are literal groans happening. <laughs> you were in pain over that time. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll, we'll send out a survey to everybody who bought a ticket tonight so you can vote on the movie, so we'll see which title. Yeah, or just pitch us your own titles. Yeah. Or pitch us your own titles. <laughs> so, uh, so why don't we, uh, if anybody's interested in asking a question, you can line up by Joe right over there, and we can get some questions going from the audience. Uh, except there we go. Okay, so about the band in the film Letters to Cleo, um, did, uh, it's like, I guess music plays a big role in the film. Um, could you talk about your interest in music and relating to the film? Hmm. One, one thing I want to say about that band is that it was the director's idea to have them come play the prom, and then he's like, he's like oh, I just gave Heath a line of like, I called in a favor, and I'm like, to who? Like, how, <laughs> how does he know the band? What? He's, he's a very connected individual. Yeah. He's very connected. Well, it's really funny because I like, I mean, I love music and indie rock. And, like, I thought the m when we were making the movie, I was just appalled at, like, that the music didn't have any, like, indie credibility. Because I was like, it needs to be Slater Kinney and all these, like, edgy bands. Um, no, you know, so I was just devastated. I was making mixed CDs for like everyone who even was remotely involved. No one cared, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, watching it now, I've come to really love it. I think it, you know, has a lot of energy, and obviously the soundtrack is a kind of like a cult favorite soundtrack. So I've gotten over, much like Karen has gotten over her hostility <laughs> towards the flashing scene. I've Learn to love the music, but, um, but wait, when they're in the freaking paddle boat and they're not moving, that's <laughs> hilarious. That is hilarious to me every time. It's just so dumb. This is not an opportunity to trash the movie. No, I'm not trashing it. I'm just saying these are the things that stick out to me as no. funny. But I'm glad you like the music. I I do too. I've come around. Uh, do we I like the Joan Armatrading song in the in the. Uh, Gil's music store actually is a really nice one. Okay. Can you talk about where it was filmed and how you found the location? That was um, Tacoma and. Near Seattle. Yeah. And we a didn't lot find of it was it. in Seattle. Um, the location yeah. scout found it. It was, we, it was an actual high school. Yeah. We wrote the movie set in Portland. I'm from Seattle. Um, so it seemed like it was kind of a. Uh, long shot actually that it would be shot in Portland and there was a lot of debate over shooting it in LA and I think the feeling was if you did shoot in LA it would be a little too close to Clueless and um, Gil the director got found this school and got really passionate about mm -hmm. um, shooting it there and I think it was a great creative decision because it just like it seems so Shakespearean and it just kind of references that so nicely in a visual way but yeah Stadium High School Tacoma Washington but that's why we were only on set for a short time, because we were working on a TV show down here. So we they wouldn't let us leave. I know. But when, when we were up there, we had so much fun, because it was just like a big 
party every night in, in Heath's hotel room. We would all convene and I would call room service and order a bunch of Bud Lights and a plate of French fries and it's really fun. Yeah, when we got there, they're like, oh, you guys have ID. You're old enough to order us beer. And I'm like, we, <laughs> took them, we took them to a strip club, actually, all the kids. Yeah. Because like, we, we, yeah, we could have, it was like 18 <laughs> and yeah, because you couldn't get them all in a bar. So yeah, we took that cast in a limo to a strip club. We're not proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yet we're saying it in front of you guys. Oh, I think we said it on the DVD. Oh, my God. (laughs) You actually did. I I think that, yeah, I've admitted on the DVD that I ordered beer for minors with Disney's money. You did? On the DVD. (laughs) It's not. Is it? It was on the commentary. I said it. I I don't know if it's on there. I remember I was watching the commentary. Uh, Fair and... Uh-oh. Sorry, Disney. <laughs> the shareholders will have you arrested. <laughs> no, they should have the person who made John Carter from Mars arrested. <laughs> Sorry, I was mean. <laughs> so, uh, do we have any mail show? Or? Okay. Anybody else? Can I, no? Can I talk? Sure. I don't know if someone... <laughs> um, you guys touched briefly oh, on your writing process, and I was just curious, like, if you guys are in the same room, does one of you sit and type, or, like, what is the... Is it one of us is writing it down, yeah. We okay. hand off the pad back and forth. She's a pacer. She likes to pace and smoke. I'm a floater. I like to float in the pool and just spout out lines. So <laughs> we, have, we have different ways of engaging our brains. I must be very still. She has to move. So. <laughs> It's probably not a good answer to that question. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we switch off and, um, and then we like kind of bring the stuff back and type it in mm. into our computer machine. <laughs> <laughs> into that technology. Yes. Um, I think one of the most famous scenes is like when he, say, when, uh, he sings a song. Can you tell us about how you guys developed that scene? We originally had this song, I think, I think I Love You by the Partridge Family, but then that was used in one of the Scream movies. So we changed it to um, You Make Me Want to Touch Myself by the Waitresses. Or the Divine. When I, or the yeah. When I, I Think of You, I Touch Myself. I touch myself. <laughs> uh, but then <laughs> the director was like, no, this should be romantic and sweet. That's not a romantic, sweet song. <laughs> so uh, I think, yeah, the, I think Heath picked this song, right, with the director? I think so, yeah. yeah. But yeah, he's very charming singing it. Can you tell us a little bit of the process of getting um, your script to um, a company to develop it or shoot well, it? our manager sent it to the producer. Was it hard? To yes, yeah. it was very hard. And in fact, before we had a manager, we had like a whole we submitted it. Yeah, we submitted it. Agents. Heather yawn everywhere. Tons of rejections. Like, we had different producers at one point take it out before our manager took it on, and everyone rejected it. And then we regrouped and found a manager, and then he took it out. And so he it had it a, three weeks. Yeah, it had a long, a long life though um, of like. Probably, of us trying to sell. It. Yeah, I mean, I remember we finished it in January of '97, and then. I remember because I went to Sundance and was giving it to people there or talking about it, and then finally I think it sold in June. So, and it, it, that even is kind of a lucky short amount of time when you, I mean, six months is pretty, pretty lucky and short. But, um, but I think you just gotta throw your material out there to to everyone that you meet who might might be interested in reading it, and and just kind of keep at it that way. Do we have any more questions, or oh, we do? What are your favorite lines in "She's the Man"? <laughs> <laughs> I got a lifetime of knowledge. <laughs> I, like I don't know why it makes me laugh. <laughs> Her, the cheese conversation. Yeah, that like. was really. I like Gouda. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> Gouda's my favorite. <laughs> She's so brilliant in that movie. Uh, She's so she's like. Great. It's such a surreal performance. She's a really a funny girl. I hope she. No. What are back. your favorite lines in She's the Man? <laughs> what? <laughs> U-G-L-Y Ubi! <laughs> <laughs> what else? 
This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how brilliant we are. Yeah, uh, yeah. great scene. I got a letter from Wait, like, what? over Wait, the... Wait, hold on. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I got a, a random letter about that tampon. <laughs> like, I'm, br I'm brilliant. Shh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but some lady sent a letter to our manager saying that she was skiing in her new baby blue ski jacket, and she got a she fell and got a nosebleed, and she didn't know what to do. So she had a tampon in her pocket and stuck it in so she wouldn't bleed all over her jacket. And she skied down the hill with the tampon hanging out of her head. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of awesome. Changing lives. That's right. <laughs> We're doing the Lord's work, clearly. <laughs> no, I don't know that. We're like Oprah. Okay, what other favorite She's the Man lines? <laughs> that's it. They don't have any more favorites. All right, sorry. I like that game. That was pretty good fun. All right. Um, all right, and we have one more question before we start the next one. There are two of you, or have? Sorry, I don't like. Questions. <laughs> um, or have you found that like your voices as writers have kind of changed as you work together? Or? Uh, I think I think b uh, both. Uh, yes, to both of those things. Like I, I think as we go through drafts, we're able to like clarify who's, you know, what. No, she might not say that. That sounds a little more like her. Or she yeah. would never say that. It's like. The, it evolves, the characters evolve a little bit as we go through these multiple drafts. So we usually are writing like, you know, eight, nine drafts before we ever show it to anybody else. But, but it's funny watching this tonight. There was a couple lines that were just such a mouthful for Julia yeah. that I was like editing them in my mind. Like the <laughs> Jacquard Noir wearing Dexter with a bow. And that, like, really? that takes her like 10 minutes to get that line out. And I'm I like, think that's a funny oh, line. We help. And I, I like the line, but I'm like, we could have helped her out by trimming that just a little bit. But yeah. yeah. We're we writing our work 13 yes. years later. <laughs> it's a yeah. process. Have y'all seen um, Mean Girls? Yes. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you watched that film, were you at all feel, feeling that the scene where it's in the cafeteria? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were like, wow, we've seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, because it seemed like when we, when 10 Things came out, there were a few other movies around that time that had that same conceit, like disturbing behavior. That's Katie Holmes movie. Oh, that. No, what was that Freddie the, Prince Jr. one too? She's she's all that. I she's think they that. had that scene too. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it's, it's kind of just a staple of the genre, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure someone did it before us. Okay. Well, so end with that one. Last question from the audience. Uh, in the script that we were given, there's a lot of swear words, mm -hmm. and the movie didn't have any. So I was wondering if maybe the movie Wait, was supposed to the be. The movie. This movie didn't have any. Yeah. I feel like this movie actually <laughs> is pretty edgy. Uh, it's, well, pretty I mean, it's PG-13, so you it, can only yeah. say, well, there, this, there's this one scene like in the beginning, <laughs> you'll notice, <laughs> Miss Perky, when mm. the kid, oh, she's yeah. with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, right? Yeah. And she's like, same little <laughs> That was <laughs> But you can only get one <laughs> in a PG-13, and apparently it cannot be a <laughs> so they CGI'd her lips to match and then had her re record. So it doesn't quite match. Next time you see it at home, like, slow down on that day. <laughs> but they spent, like, money to literally CGI just to get rid of the word. Stupid. But, um, but I don't even know. Do we even have one in there now? Because that was our one. So was, that's a that's a oh. movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy, though, like, like Keith is smoking in the movie. Yeah. And I mean, it's pretty, it, the rules have changed a lot. But, um, but yeah, I don't think we really, when, at the time we wrote it, we didn't really have the, like, ratings restriction in our mind. Yeah, because we Keith just is in a bar kind of drinking a beer. And he, like, now, <laughs> now they would never let that fly. It's crazy. A on the face, that would probably be rated R. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That happened to a friend of mine in college. He passed out, and his roommates threw that on him. And he just walked up. He woke up the next morning and walked across the street to the 7-Eleven to get a big go with that <laughs> on his face. <laughs> and I just always thought that was the funniest thing in the world. I'm like, gonna have to put that in a movie someday. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but yeah, we swear a lot, so uh, that's why our scripts have lots of swear words in them. But sometimes we have to go through and cross out a few.
Yeah. Sometimes we're always like, are we balls heavy on this one? Like, yeah. <laughs> we like to say that we're balls a lot. So. For She's the Man, we had a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had a ton. They really wanted us to make it edgy, and so we did, and we went and we went crazy, and then they made us change, like, all the to, like, not. Uh, yeah. So we had to go in and, like, do, we called, like, French bread. <laughs> yeah. Was, like, a no, but we know you're talking about it. Right. And I'm like, but we're saying, we had a guy saying, like, don't ever show me your French bread again. Because when the guy, like, pulls down his pants on the thing, and they're like, but we know you're talking well, we, about it, so you can't say French bread. I'm like, what? And we got, <laughs> but we got really clever with, like, food stuff. Yeah, we, oh, we tried to replace balls with kumquats. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were like, they were on to us. But they were, but they point, were like, they were we know like, your little game. Just like, stay out of the genital region, ladies. Yeah, it food was, stuff genitals they were, game. <laughs> they were a pain in the butt to work with. <laughs> we love them. We love them. We do, we, we do love them, but yeah. it was just a pain to try to change the word balls 17 times into something. But it made us better artists. Yeah. yeah. Finding creative ways. Yeah. Clearly. Uh, well, well we, we, our last question usually is always, uh, tell us about like a movie theater experience you had growing up. Like a special movie, seeing oh. your family, or something inspired you, anything, or just a great experience you had going to the movies as a youngster. Uh, Grease was my favorite movie as a kid. And then in ninth grade, Blue Lagoon came along. Oops. And I probably saw that a hundred times in a movie theater. <laughs> I, yeah, I saw, I saw like the 16 Candles probably five times in a the movie theater. I actually remember being a little kid and seeing The Black Stallion. Um, I, that was the first movie I ever sat through just twice, which is a, it's a really good movie about a pony. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I just saw Xanadu for the first time over Thanksgiving. It's so good. It's, I watched it three times within 24 hours. That's how hungover I was. <laughs> it is <laughs> the, like the worst, best, bad, bad, the best, worst movie? I don't even know how to yeah, say it. It's worst. the best, worst movie I've ever seen. You must check it out. It, but by the third time, I'm like, I think I finally get it now. <laughs> it's very complex. Get back to me after you see it. I it's trippy is what it is. It, yeah. I felt like if I'd done peyote, I would have gotten it after the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept watching it. I'm yeah. like, somehow this is going to make sense. Xanadu. It's Xanadu. Like, if you it's like Paul Thomas Anderson movies, you'll really like it. It's a musical about <laughs> roller skating. <laughs> roller skating? John Travolta? And, uh, no, it's not John Travolta. John Travolta, John Travolta had been in the movie. Living Newton-John was in it. Yeah. Though, right? yeah. It was and and this Kelly. Movie. Jeff Conway. And this Isn't Jeff Conway here? <laughs> No, yeah, it's this actor called Michael Beck that I told you was so bad, it seemed like he was Jeff Cohen. <laughs> okay. We don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe he's working anymore. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have a few <laughs> prizes out there. If anybody's willing, uh, Alyssa, if you can line up. Uh, if anybody's willing to do the Julia Salad dance, yeah! we have, uh, yeah. if you line up, Alyssa, let you, we have some autographed memorabilia. Uh, oh God, for I the winners, this. and we get you get to judge, and we just sit okay, hang here and they dance for do us. Do we have the song? We don't have the song. What? We, don't have the song. we have to have music. How are they supposed to dance without the They're music? They're going to have to. Oh, we do have. Oh, I like the guys. Yes, we need music. Uh, yes. Oh, I like the guys are doing this. All right. Hmm. Let me see. Uh, assembly. I don't. Okay. Should we? We no, you can say no. Okay. They're gonna dance for us right here. Walk they by. They can dance for us. So uh, there will be. Th this is amazing. There are four prizes. Uh, three uh, the same, and there'll be a grand prize. So I don't know if he's dancing or he's uh he's not dancing. <laughs> so thank you, Alyssa. You're my assistant on this. So if you could bring the first guest to the stage, and they will do a little Julia Styles dance, whoa, and then our whoa, guests will vote on guys, the winners. You guys, I think we should make some. Like, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 yeah, let's whoa, do some cheering. Whoa, something like f to help him. Yeah. He brought me his <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> oh, good that. job, good job. Oh, come this way. Come this way. And if we wait along the railing, we'll that have a vote great. and you get to meet our... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're next. Let's get, uh, let's get the clapping going, whoa, guys, whoa. since we don't have the... Way. Oh! <laughs> woo!
Great job. She's got the hair down. Yeah. She's got the hair, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> that was my prom dance. Congratulations. That was exactly the same dance. All right, so we have three prizes for your first three. Oh. It's just girl. such a shame to have to choose. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Everyone needs to get hmm. a prize. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll figure out something. Okay. Uh, everybody will get a prize. Was, uh, you guys were all amazing. <laughs> Woo! I can't do it. So many <laughs> Uh, all right, why don't we do a grand prize? And each of them is going to get something, a nice okay. little prize, but we do have to you do have to select like a grand prize. Well, we can't do it while everyone's watching the judge. Oh, is this like a American Idol type thing? It is American Idol. We can, Idol. Like we can uh, sit and Why judge? don't we, uh, uh, Sound Mixer, if you can mute their two mics for a moment as they discuss. Can't everybody vote? Like, by okay, people? sure. Don't put the pressure on All right, no, no. Why don't you guys come back on stage? And we'll stand over here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> this is you're, now terrible. you're embarrassed. Like, After all that dancing, now I suddenly <laughs> you guys are embarrassed. Okay, let's have a clapping by clapping. We'll pick. We have contestant number one. <laughs> good job, good job, good job. We have contestant number two. <laughs> we have contestant number three. Contestant number four. <laughs> contestant five. Yeah. And contestant six. Hmm. What? Okay. All right, I, it's close. I think two. Should we go down the two? Okay. All right, can we pick the three? Sure, sure. Okay, we, based on that, contestant two, contestant five, and contestant six. <laughs> Step on up. Uh, th th step up. So what's three? What are we doing? Oh, are we doing a, a elimination vote or what are we doing? No, they're all, they all three won. They all tied. I, th <laughs> <laughs> I like tied. You like what? Ties are good. All right. Ties all right. Woo! Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, can you bring up some of the? Uh, Alyssa, can you bring up some of the programs? So you three will receive. Uh, said so you're the three winners. <laughs> Taming of the Shrew autograph books from our, our ladies. By the girls who stole the plot. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys favorite lines from this movie? Oh, yeah. 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 Favorite lines from the movie, shout them out. I <laughs> 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 that was a gill one. <laughs> what was that one? The shit had to do with it. Up to my elbows in Pilsen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and hell is just a song. <laughs> That's one of my favorites, too. That makes me laugh. So here you go. Here's your Taming of the Shrew. And then, uh, and for our other ca candidates, we have, we'll sign programs. Oh. I'd like to thank Karen McCullough Lutz and Curtis Smith oh, for coming thank tonight. Thank you guys, yeah. thank you guys thank you so for coming. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank the awesome Pollock Theater interns for producing this event. Yay, interns. You know, interns are awesome. Yeah. And I'd like to thank our six dancers, brave thank enough to come to the stage. Good job. Thank you Good so much. Job. We will have a video for you, so that'll be part of your present. We'll give you a video of your dancing on Blu-ray. So that's another prize. So see me after. 
And thank you all for coming. Please stay. We have cupcakes and drinks in the uh, lobby. Ooh.